Look inside your cell phone or computer and find the processor. Or even look inside your body and find the pill cam. Israel created these products along with voice over IP, such as Skype or Vonage, drip irrigation, email, antivirus, and Google Suggest. Although Israel is surrounded by countries that continually threaten its existence, it continues to thrive academically, militarily, and in the international business. Israel only trails the United States in the number of companies listed on the NASDAQ. How could a country smaller in size and population than New Jersey have such a contribution to the world? It's about the fact that we are living in an environment which nurtures the, the entrepreneurship. This is the environment that builds it up. So everybody's involved and everybody's impressing everybody. So it's, it's catchy. So for a startup to succeed, um, you need a, an environment that encourages uh, startups. So an environment that would include uh, venture capital, so the ability to, to finance startups. An environment that includes um, um, very high education. So like innovation hubs of startups in the US would be the Boston area, right, that has Harvard and MIT and so many other universities and schools around it and the Silicon Valley that has Stanford and Berkeley and other great universities around it. Israelis, by nature, uh, think out of the box. Um, they, they're very innovative and they like to find shortcuts for solutions. Sometimes they lack uh, strategic thinking and thinking for the long term, um, but they definitely have a mindset that is a, a high fit with what we see in startups. Everyone in Israel serves in the army, males and females alike, providing them with invaluable experience that they apply to civilian life. The army definitely helps, but uh, what I say that this doesn't create entrepreneurs. The army provides young people with opportunities to assume uh, big responsibilities. You know, here in a very tender age, kids who are 22 years old can get responsibility of, to, for projects which are tens of millions of dollars, which doesn't happen in other places in the world. So the army helps in getting kids experience in running large projects. Usually in the industry, in order to run large projects, you have to become first incompetent in your business, in your profession, and then you are being promoted to managerial capacity. Here, they take the young, fresh minds and give them the responsibility. So this is the contribution of the army. In the book The Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell states that one needs to spend 10,000 hours to master a subject, whether it is tennis, business, or high tech. What you find is that the Israeli army is an opportunity to get 10,000 hours uh, of being an expert in many different fields. Uh, including leadership, including technology innovation, including managing technology. And that's why many people that finish the military service at a comparatively young age of 21, right, 20, 21, they've already gained that very significant experience in mastering a, a specific uh, field and area of expertise. So I think maybe that can help you make the connection between the military service and the uh, and doing well on the business entrepreneurial field. Good academics and a strong army may be a result of Israel's Jewish culture. Founded in 1948, Israel had to build up its economy from virtually nothing. The Jewish-Israeli culture has centered around constant innovation to achieve economic success. The Jewish mentality involves taking risks, capturing new ideas. The secret source of the Israeli innovation machine is the Jewish mother. And in order to be Jewish mother, you don't have to be Jewish, and even you don't have to be female. Jewish mother is a state of mind. You see, here, every kid which is being grown is immediately challenged by his parents. How are you doing? Why your cousins are smarter than you? Why you are not accomplishing, you have to learn, you have to study. It's being pushed, 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 like I guess happened to, 
to you, and I think this is the reason. Innovation is not a technical phenomena, it's a cultural. I think that the Israeli culture really promotes innovation and creativity. And on the other hand, we are not very disciplined. And by being no disciplines, we do some shortcuts and we run faster. Uh, this enables us to do much uh, more things and in a different way than others. It doesn't mean that the others are bad, it means that we are better. Uh, Israel has come with this uh, chutzpah that uh, if somebody said this is how things should be done, they have a notion of doing things in a better way. And that's what you're looking for in entrepreneurs. You're looking for entrepreneurs to try and change the world, to come and uh, think that they can do things in a better way. And sometimes with the right combination of talent and timing and education and some experience and attitude, they manage to do that. In 1948, Israel was already on a path of cutting-edge technologies, but when the well-trained Russians arrived, it boosted the pace of innovation. I think that the fact that people are coming from different cultures make it uh, very challenging from one side. On the other hand, people bring again, as I've said, bring with them the good things from the cultures as well. Uh, if I look on the early 90s, and I remember coming back from the US after two years in 1992, I didn't recognize Israel. There were about one million Russian immigrants. Other than signs in Russian everywhere, which was really a strange thing to me, uh, basically I look today at Intel and one third of my engineers are Russian. They are good and they, they brought good things to Israel because even the, the, the universities, the Technion and others in Israel can't produce as many engineers as we need. And it was a refreshing thing to us and definitely it was a success. Although most of the world is suffering from economic difficulties, Israel is a thriving economy and through innovation, problem solving and economic success, she has managed to overcome many challenges on her route to success. And just as importantly, without its flourishing high tech, Israel itself wouldn't be the same either. In 2011, her exports continue to grow despite the global economic meltdown due to its highly specialized lines of exports, which correspond to the vital global needs in the areas of pharmaceuticals, medical devices, agriculture, water technologies, energy alternatives, software, laptop computers, telecommunications, and defense industries. The New York-based Trading Economics reported a 1 billion Israeli current account surplus in the first quarter of 2011. It is clear that without Israelis' contributions, the modern world would not be the same today.